what's up? Welcome back to Nancheku Tricks. My name is Ken. It's good to uh, see everyone. Actually, everyone's seeing me. I can't see any of you. I'm just looking at a camera right now, to be honest. But I'm imagining it's you, whoever you are, YouTube viewer. <laughs> and I wanted to talk about um, a lot of the questions I've been getting lately. I want to actually cover some of the questions in today's class. And I also wanted to say, um, We'll be heading out to Colorado in about a week and a half, so if you guys are heading down to Spin Summit, I'll see you there. Uh, if not, you know, if you have any questions at all, you can always get in contact with me. Um, there's a lot of things going on right now, but I'm always happy to like watch over people's progress. I Do keep in mind, it's going to take some time though, because I have, it is getting so busy and I'm trying to get uh, flow tricks out there and it's, it's on the verge of coming out there, but it's really hard putting together all these things on your own, like your websites and stuff. I mean, I don't want to bore you with all the details, but essentially flow tricks, because I have such a wide vision for it, it's taking me longer to get it started because you got to like build a solid framework. And guess what? It's the same with nunchucks. When you're practicing with nunchucks too, it's, it's, it's the same thing. You, you got to build a solid framework for, uh, for what you're doing. Otherwise, if you learn this technique here and you learn this technique there, which is what you could already do on YouTube, then what you'll have is all these techniques, but they're kind of disconnected. Flow Tricks is supposed to encompass everything and connect them together in a very nice and neat order so you can see how everything connects together. Now, Nunchaku Tricks is pretty good at that. I mean, I have like a beginner to advanced. And uh, right now, though, we're just kind of, you know, going across uh, random techniques anymore. So once you've reached this level, it kind of goes a little bit more sporadic. But I'm, I'm pretty uh, excited because I think Flow Tricks is actually going to go more in depth with. Uh, continuing up upon some sort of line that splits apart into multiple lines and it's almost chaotic and random but there's like kind of a crazy order to it um so i just wanted to say again thank you all thank you malik gibbs you're the man you just sent an awesome donation and it's actually going to help flow tricks a lot now next week uh or the week after it may take one to two weeks i'm going to be making a 30 minute video now maybe slightly longer than 30 minutes but i'm making a 30 minute video on how to, how to train better. It's essentially just how to train. There's gonna be 10 steps on how to make your training efficient, different workouts that you can do, stretches, um, ways that you can perceive your training and make it very efficient. So you can train, whether it's every day or every week, you can make maximize that. Now, all I ask for that video is gonna be just any kind of PayPal donation, whether it's a dollar or $100 or $1 million, <laughs> but yeah, so this video is going to be uh, available to anyone that wants to donate any kind of money to help Flow Tricks out because it's kind of taken a little bit of a rough start and it's kind of taken me a lot longer since I'm doing it on my own and it would be really nice to be able to just to like hire it out a little bit to here and a little bit there. I think that would be really awesome. So any donations you guys want to make, I will put a link below. And with that said, let's go ahead and uh, start working on some techniques. Okay, first of all. I keep getting the same question and it makes total sense. The question is, how do I do an infant wrist roll? And the answer is, very carefully of course, <laughs> no. uh, you do an infinite wrist roll and you may not find this video because I have an injured arm at the time, oh, yeah, my left, right, it, yeah, it switched to arms all of a sudden, I went back in time and dislocated the wrong shoulder. Now, uh, when I have my dislocated shoulder, I was demonstrating the infinite, so you may have lost it. So I'm actually going to put both of the infinites right now and here's how it goes. Okay. We have four major wrist rolls. Two of them go from a front grip to a back grip. Okay, so the first one is front grip to back grip, right? The second one is, of course, the exact opposite. You're in a back grip and you go to your front grip. Now, Ken, what's a back grip? What's a front grip? You haven't watched the beginner tutorial series. Go back, <laughs> okay? Now, the last two wrist rolls is the back to back and a front to front. Right now, we've gone from front grip to back grip and then back grip to front grip, right? Back to front, front to back. The last two is just front to front and back to back. Actually, we're gonna go to back to back first. So let me show you how it works. Say I'm in a back grip right now. Remember back grip, if I stick my thumb out, it looks kind of like a knife and this is actually longer. It doesn't look like a knife at all actually, but in this instance, I always think of the knife because like the killer's knife is longer on the bottom and that is back grip and you can like, you know, you remember this. Anyways, you're in a back grip. And all you're going to do is, uh, if it's in your right hand, you're going to rotate it clockwise. If it's in your left hand, it's going to go counterclockwise, right? And what you're aiming for 
What you're aiming for is the side of your wrist right here, okay? So we're gonna take it step by step. First, you're gonna hold in the back grip. Second, you're gonna roll the nunchuck. Now look, I'm pointing this nunchuck straight at the camera. So if I go to from this side, here's how it looks. It's holding up, pull it up, boom. I'm pointing straight out. Look, even my finger's sticking out like that. This is what you can see. Now essentially what you're trying to do, and I couldn't do this when I had a dislocated shoulder, which is great now because I can do this. What you're trying to do is you're trying to get this to flip into this part of your hand. And the only way to do that is to take this hand and to push it out and release it. Now the momentum should be just allow this to fly right into your hand right here and you close it. But we're going to go very slowly again. So here's how you can do it if you're just trying to figure out where does it go. Start here and wrap it around. Make sure it's across that fleshy part of your thumb is right below it. Go straight across your wrist this way. See that? It's a very straight line. Straight across the thumb, very straight line down. As, it's, as the nunchuck is going around this way in slow motion, as soon as it makes connection to the back of my wrist, my hand is going to flick this up. As it's flicking up, the momentum is still going to be turning because I'm, you know, because I'm spinning it, and it should land right here. Now you're trying to get it to land in between the thumb, the ridge between the thumb and the pointer finger. As soon as it lands there, you grab it. So it goes like this. Boom. Right? Do you see where this is going? Okay, so it's going across the back of my wrist right here. But as I was pulling to the forward, it's actually aiming kind of for the fleshy part of the hand right here. So, again, boom, it's going up. And the moment it touches the back of the wrist, we kind of flick this out of the way to make room and grab this one. And this will cause it to spin. So it looks like this. Bam. Again. Bam. One more time. Bam. It's not really a bam move, is it? It's more like a whoosh. <laughs> yes, yes. Definitely a whoosh. There's no bamming involved with that one. More bang was like, bam, right? This is more like, whoosha. So, and it's going, whoa, you, you wrap it around, pull, ow, hit the wall. <laughs> Put the nunchuck straight at the camera or straight at your mirror or straight at your mortal enemy. And um, as it's coming across, flick it up and grab. Bam, that is your back to back, okay? Now, we're gonna go over the front to front next. Best way I can describe the front to front is you don't even need the nunchuck right now. I've kind of described this already in the other. If you could just, this is a wall, right? If you could walk up to a wall and imagine there's a screw sitting there right in the wall and you need to screw it and your thumb is a screwdriver, a flathead screwdriver, you're gonna take your thumb and you're gonna screw it in this way. This is how to do a front to front, just like that. So in your right hand, we're gonna go counterclockwise and we're gonna take our thumb, we're gonna stick it out and we're gonna just twist it, just like that. It's gonna go in a, it's gonna go um, from three o'clock to nine o'clock. So it's gonna go in a half moon arc. Here's how it's gonna look. This time we're in a front grip because we're going front to front, right? We're not in the back grip anymore, we're in our front grip. We're standing here like this, looking like a ninja. And then we're gonna go like this, boom. Now we can't really stick out our thumb because we have to hold on to the nunchuck. But look at what happens, my hand pinches over and this thumb is sticking out. And in actuality, I'm trying to like just twist it that way. I just want to make sure that you keep your thumb straight out like this. From the side, it looks like this. Boom, right? Here's the thing. I'm gonna use my other hand to just to grab it to show you what's gonna happen. Because if I let go right here, it's just gonna fall, right? So you actually, that would be letting go way too early. What you're trying to do is get the chain to wrap around the, uh, the bottom of your wrist like that. I know, it sounds kind of crazy. This one is probably the hardest one to, to get a hold of, but trust me, you can get this, okay? The best way to get this is to go slowly and to use your hand in assist. And what I mean by assist is, once you can visualize it, it's a lot easier to do. So, use your other hand right now, and don't really spin it that hard and assist, and hold it like this. Here, it's going across the bottom of the wrist like this, and it's coming up, right? Going across the bottom of the wrist. That's probably the hardest part, because it's kind of a strange bend if you look at it. Your hand's coming straight, but it's coming over this way. So it's up, and this is going around. Now as you let go, you can only let go when the nunchuck is spinning on its way out, because if you let go over here, it may fly that direction. So you have to let go at the last possible second. Once you let go, here's where you're aiming for, okay? Because once you let go, you still may wonder, well, this, if the nunchuck's going this way, where do I go? And if I turn my hand around, it's actually going from the back of the wrist to this open L shape of your hand. So it's moving up and over and you grab. So once again, do the little screw thing, like you're screwing it in with your thumb, 
Use your other hand and pull it over to simulate the momentum. So it's going around, it's going over. You're going to open your hand and imagine that it's going from the back of the wrist all the way to the L part of your, of your pointer and your thumb. That also means if you don't have this L wide, if it's like kind of short, it's going to be really hard for you to catch that. So make sure this is, this is a wide open area like that. The wider it is, the easier it will be for it to fall because then you have all of this leeway that it could fly into your hand and grab. Fast motion looks like this. Oops. <laughs> and slow motion, as slow as I possibly can. Rah, rah. And in very slow motion with assisted, it's like this here, coming across here, opening up my hand, making the L to reach around and grab it and pulling it through. Again, one more time. Here, going over the L. Or, it's not going over the L yet. <laughs> it's going across the back of the wrist and then through the L. And then you grab. I'm gonna give you an extra bonus one. This is a 720 wrist roll. This is an extra, watch this. Boom, boom, catch. One more time, boom, boom, catch. The 720 wrist roll is a front to front, but you're actually holding uh, slightly like around the midpoint, maybe a little bit higher, like midpoint would be here, maybe just slightly higher or right around the midpoint, it's fine. And you're gonna do the exact same thing. You're gonna do this roll here, What's going to happen is you're actually going to have a lot of space. So it's going to roll across once and it's going to roll across a second time. You're actually trying to get this to roll across the back of your wrist two times instead of once. Again, boom, boom, and grab. This one's going to take a little bit of practice, but if you can do your front to fronts, you can do a 720. All right, let's do one more variation here. You guys know your rips, right? You're just taking one hand, you have an overhand, underhand grip, and then one that's in uh, underhand, or underhand grip pushes over to your other hand and grab it. This is a beginner move. We have a, uh, if you're not sure, just look up the, uh, the rips from, from the old, uh, from the old video and you'll totally see it. Now we're going to add a little bit more. Essentially, we're going to start moving it in lines. So I'm going to start with my right hand is in an underhand grip like this. My left hand is in an overhand grip and I'm going to shoot it over to the right side. Okay. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to move my arm in a line as it moves over to the left. So it looks like this. Boom. We're still just doing a rip, essentially, but this time we're now moving our hands with it. So, underhand grip for the right, overhand grip for the left, and I'm moving my arm in a line as I, as I do the rip. Boom. Practice that. Once you're on the other side, of course, you do the exact opposite. So now my left, of course, my hands have changed, so I'm going to pu pull it in a line this direction. Boom. Okay, so we're going to go back and forth with that. If that seems too easy, which it very well might be, and then we're going to start low and we're going to pull it high. You're going to notice there may be a slightly different feel to this because now you're going to feel a little bit more pull towards your pinky side. Like that. Uh, when you're doing it this way, it feels like just like a standard rip like this. What we're actually doing is a slightly uh, anti-spinning the rip. So let's, let's work on this. When you go up and down, I can kind of feel it like the same motion of an anti-spin through a rip, which is kind of really interesting. Let me show you how to do an any rip then. So if we're going this direction already, this is probably the most natural way to throw, to throw a rip. I guess we'd call that an in-spin rip or something, right? Now, if, I'm, if my right hand's on underhand and my left hand's in overhand, which is how we started, remember? So right hand is underhand, left hand is overhand. Right now, this would be what we just worked on. But if my right hand's in underhand and I shoot it this way, everything shifts over. Now watch what happens. My right hand's gonna pull up and I'm gonna move over in that same left line, but actually my pinky fingers are gonna start, are going to start uh, controlling it. And you'll also notice that most of the motion is below instead of above. For instance, if you look again, the standard one, most of the motion is happening above the circle, this direction up here. You're pulling over the top. See that? How my hand's pulling over the top? Uh, in the reverse direction, it's actually coming down from the bottom. So, a really good way to train if you want to work on your rips and anti rips and just kind of get some really cool, fun uh, assortment of moves just with rips itself is to do these rips in a line and then out of nowhere just pull it back and then work on the anti rip and then pull it again. Line back. Up, down, here, line, 
Get it, get it, get it. You guys get it? So no matter what you do, if you're doing your, here's your regular reps. Nice, we're kind of getting bored with those. Push, create a line. Now we're doing any reps. Push another line, now we're doing regular reps. What do I mean by push a line? If you're still confused, I'm essentially just saying, if I do this rip here, but I start on this side and my line goes the opposite direction, it, uh, it reverses the whole rotation. You have to learn it twice, that's all. But it's really cool, it'll make it very versatile. So we can go like, now, now we can start making plus signs. Here, here, pull, down, up, left, right. Really fun. Whoosh. Catch it with your elbow once in a while. Go into your hyper, bam, whatever. Rips again. Any rips. Drop it. Mm, I haven't dropped it yet, so let's do that. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you guys one more thing too. I'm gonna drop it. I'm not gonna edit it out. I know, it's crazy. There's a lot of people out there that don't ever drop. They don't ever make mistakes. It's pretty wild and all their videos are flawless, but I guess I'm just human being. Someone that's put many, many hours into the work, but I am definitely not immune to it. And I'm not afraid to show you guys because I think, I think you guys should see more people dropping it. And I know people are dropping, they're just not recording it. So all of a sudden everyone thinks that this is some sort of flawless thing they can't touch. Now you're gonna drop it, man. You're gonna drop it a lot. Okay. Hey, the last thing, the last thing I wanna tell you guys is about safety. And um, it's totally cool if you wanna use oak because I use heavy nunchucks for a long time actually. But uh, the problem is, is I've almost fractured my elbow because uh, in the beginning when I didn't know my moves I was doing it extremely fast with you know a lot of inspiration and just drive and determination but my angles weren't right yet so I'm always gonna recommend foam nunchucks and now I know some people have said don't use foam it's not a weapon and that's totally cool and it's totally not a weapon in this in this class and circus ninja <laughs> flow tricks nunchaku tricks our goal is to make something aesthetically pleasing so I cannot help but recommend, because I'm still reading people are getting injured and that's, that's okay. I mean, that happens once in a while, but if you're using your foam nunchucks, you're gonna be a lot less damaged than uh, oak by far. Um, it's just smart. And people, some people don't think you can transition over, but I can guarantee you can, because I do it all the time. I'll come up with new moves on the foams, and then I'll use the heaviest nunchuck, which is fire nunchucks. They're heavier than oak because they get soaked at the bottom. Not only are they wooden, but you have to soak them in fuel at the bottom. So they're, they're fairly heavy nunchucks. But it's like, why would you take the chance of having to learn how to spin straight and possibly like even crack, an el you know, crack your bone or, or elbow? I just, I don't see a, a good enough reason, even though pain can be a good teacher. Um, so can just the pure drive of making a mistake. You know, and I'm just saying this because I don't want to see people get injured, you know, and one of the big reasons why I don't teach fire yet on YouTube is just because I don't want to see, I've seen people get injured, I'm getting too many messages where people are getting hurt already and, uh, and they're not using foams, you know, and, and like I said, I totally understand that because, you know, it's pretty badass to be using like the other uh, nunchucks, but you, you definitely want to be safe because you want to do this for a while. With that said, let's say you have injured your elbow. I'm gonna show you a little trick that I learned, okay? I built this, and <laughs> this is kind of like my little special elbow pad that I built on my own. Now, if you have your own elbow pad, it works just great too, but I always like to like be a little bit creative. Um, so what I've done essentially is inside this little pad here is a uh, sponge, which should absorb a little bit of impact. And I also went to the store and I bought uh, these little, uh, those little, you put them in your soles, and I can't think of what they are. They're like this gel, and they're made for impact on your feet. So I put them together, and then I used this special tape, and I taped it up. So now I have something that can absorb a hard hit, and it can also, like, it has some padding along with it. Now, how would you put this on your elbow? It's really simple, too. It's another little trick that you can do at home. And that's essentially, you take a sock, you buy a sock, you cut off one part of it, and then you just take this, and you put it inside of it. Is it going to be foolproof? No. But like I said, for someone like me, and I've definitely injured my, uh, myself enough to where I have to make sure if I crack that bone, it could take me out for a week or two, you know. Most importantly, everyone, just train safe. Train safe. I want to see all you guys, like, rocking out the nunchuck world. So 
in five, ten years, man, we'll have an army of ninjas, right? That's like, that's like the goal. We don't want like an army of people with crippled arms. <laughs> so if you can use foam, if you absolutely can't use foam, that's totally cool too. Just, just be careful. Just be careful. That's, that's all that I ask. And, um, yeah, there's gonna be a lot of great things around the corner. Like I said, I'm super excited for flow tricks, super excited for a lot of things. And, um, we do a lot of traveling as well. So if you have any questions at all, you know, come to the Facebook page. Uh, we have a discussion board. Um, Flow Tricks is still being built. It's taking a lot longer than I thought, but wait till you see it. It's going to be awesome. Till then, you all keep spinning.